Hi everybody, it's great to be back here in Itamo. We are continuing our lessons on prophecy. And last lesson we spoke about an introduction to prophecy, and my goal in this lecture series is to bring some bring to your attention our great sages that write about prophecy and the different um, directions that we see amongst our Gishonim, our sages, where it will help us understand when we study the, um, the Bible, we'll get a greater insight into what our prophets have told us inside their amazing teachings by knowing you know, what prophecy is all about. In order to continue what we spoke about last time, we ended up with Maimonides and discussing the different levels of angels and mentioning that the lowest level, there were 10 angelic levels and the lowest one called Ishim, Ish in Hebrew is man. That level is the level that angels actually spoke to the prophets. They had their prophetic visions um, connecting to these angels called Ishim, okay? And they were, since their level was close to human beings, and that's the 10th level we spoke about. Before, as, before we go on in our teachings about prophecy, I want to give a little understanding or a little historical framework of who Maimonides is. And we, read, we hear about him a lot, and I mention him very often. We're going to be reading a lot of his works, and it's important to know who our great um, giants are and where they come from. So Maimonides, for example, the Rambam, his name was Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. Moshe, the son of Maimon, that was his father's name. He was born in 1138 in Cordova, Spain. The Rambam was, um, oh yeah, he passes away later on in 1204 in um, Fastat, which is the ancient name of Cairo in Egypt. So the Rambam passes away later in 1204. But for his lifespan, he, the Rambam was extremely successful in a giant of Torah. His father, Rabbi Maimon, he was a judge, a dayan, a judge meaning that he was a great rabbinical leader in the city of in Cordova, Spain. And he received his Torah from a rabbi named Rabbi Yosef Migash. Migash, again, was one of the great leaders, rabbinical leaders beforehand, and which was known to be the student of the Rif, Rabbi Yitzchak El Fasi. Again, this is, um, we're talking about a, the, the um, Shol Shelet, a chain of great rabbis going all the way back to the Gaonic period. And the Rambam was just a continuation of that line. But he was a giant of giants. And um, in 1148, after the radical Muslims entered Spain, the Rambam and his family were forced to go into exile. And they traveled from place to place looking for a haven, a safe haven. That was the, the lot of the Jews that we know throughout the Dark Ages. And the Rambam, in 1160, they made their way and they came to Fez, Morocco. And in Morocco, the Rama began to work on his famous um, writings. We know the Rama wrote, and we'll speak about that in a moment, what he wrote, some of his great works. And at the same time, the Rambam began to study uh, medicine, where he became a doctor, and that was his profession, his livelihood, his life's livelihood, where he made a living from. In 1165, the family left northern Africa, Morocco, and they came to the land of Israel. And unfortunately, their settling in Israel didn't go well. It was a very difficult conditions to be in Israel at the time, but they tried. So they were forced to go to Egypt, to Cahir. Um, Cahir is, is Cairo. And there, there was, um, if you're familiar with the, there's a group called the Karim, the Karaites. And they were very, very rooted in to the um, society there in Egypt. And their influence on society and on religion was felt very, very strongly there. And the rabbis of, in fact, the Rambam, of course, but the great rabbis, they had to um, push, you know, and, and teach very strongly to push away the influence of these, this dangerous sect called the Karaites. Um, the Rambam was appointed the head of the, the, the congregation, the head of the um, um, area, of course, as, as an expert in all areas of Torah, he wrote many, many works, he wrote letters, and he, um, not only that, in, when he was in Cairo, he was also appointed as the private doctor of Salah al-Din, him and his family, so he was really um, very, very busy with um, his medical profession as well. And the Rambam is known to write, he wrote tremendous works in Jewish law, known as the Mishneh Torah. He wrote as well 
his famous philosophical work, The Guide to the Perplexed. Later on in his life, he wrote a commentary on the Mishnah and many other works um, the Rambam wrote. He wrote books on medicine as well. And he was just a giant, a tremendous, tremendous giant um, in what's it called, in our history of our sages. The very few that says that there's an expression that's written on the tomb. The Rambam is buried in Israel and um, in Tveli, in Tiberias, and it says on his tomb, from Moshe ad Moshe lo kam ka Moshe. From Moses to Moses, there never came another Moses, because the Rambam's name was Moses, Moshe. So, um, fascinating, fascinating you think about it. Um, a little histor- history before we, we study the words of these great sages, to know who they are. And, um, you know, and to actually, you know, when you, when you connect to their, li- their life stories, it makes it, it brings it a, a much more home. I think uh, it's a much better, it's a much better way of, when you're studying a lot of times about, you know, we told all kinds of teachings, you want to connect them out to the rabbis that, that, um, you know, that brought down, you know, such great teachings and our, our legacy is, the, is in, in these rabbis that literally passed down the chain from Moses on Sinai. Fascinating. But anyway, I want to get back, um, but we will mention, God willing, my goal is to bring down, um, to also to help and give you that historical frame as we study um, from these great rabbis. But now getting back to what Maimonides was studying, Maimonides, the laws called Yisodea Torah, the foundations of Torah, and there the Rambam introduces us in the first four chapters of, of foundations of Torah to important concepts that um, we're going to talk about now and have to do with prophecy and have to do with esoteric teachings of Torah. And the Rambam says, and I'll, I'll quote what he says in the Hilchot Yisodei Torah, in the laws of foundations of Torah, he says there are ten commandments. He's, he's going to write about ten different Torah commandments. Six of them are positive and four are negative in, the, in this section of law called foundations of Torah. You can go online and actually find online translations in English of the Rambam. You can actually read the, if you want to read the whole chapters regarding these laws. And the Rambam brings down ten principles, ten laws he's going to focus on. One is to know that there is a God. That's one of the positive commandments. We must know that there is a God in the world. Number two, We should. The second one is to know that there is no other God but God Himself. No one else. God doesn't share His dominion to anyone else. There's only one God. And and and, and bringing down the concept of, of another one, God forbid, is is totally contradicting, defining, you know, it's defying the concept of what God is. And that's law number three, where the Raman talks about liyachado, we have a, a commandment of to unify, you know, we are, the unification, to understand what that means, of liyached Hashem, to understanding the unity of God, lahava, to love God is the fourth commandment, the fifth commandment is to fear God, so there's a difference of loving God and fearing God, the sixth law is to sanctify God, the seventh law is not to profane the name of God. The eighth law he talks about not to erase anything. That God is, um, God's name is called on them, not to erase those things. The Shmom and the Navi, the, tenth, the ninth law, is to listen very carefully to the words of the prophets. And the tenth law is not to try God. And all these ten important commandments are what the Rambam writes about in the, in, in the laws of the foundations of Torah. But again, here our focus is going to be more focused on the chapters where he focuses on prophecy. Okay, so that's what I just wanted to mention. It's a good thing to do to one day for us to study all those chapters in the, in, in the foundations of Torah of, the, of Maimonides. But anyway, now we're going to be reading the second, let's get back to the second chapter of the laws of the foundations of Torah. And the Rambam writes like this, Dvarim Elo, Shabbalm, Binyanze Vishnei Prakim Elo, the first two chapters of the foundations of Torah. The Rambam says, they are like a drop in the sea of what we, we must learn in order to explain these areas. And this, and explaining all these principles, and these two chapters is what's known as Ma'aseh Merkava, it's known as the work of the chariot. What is the Rambam referring to? The Rambam is referring to the most esoteric teachings of, of Judaism, which refer to understanding what we can as human beings grasp about God, about the angelic world, the Rambam describes as Masem Kavan. This is what is known as the work of the chariot. These are the, the 
the esoteric teachings, what the Rambam says, and he goes on to say, Tzivu Chachamim Arishoni, and the rabbis commanded us, Shelo lidrosh b'dvarim eilu, not to learn these things, li'ish, ela li'ish echad b'lvad, only to learn on an individual basis, v'hu shiyah chacham mevin medato, this person that he teaches must be a wise person and has, and he understands on his own. V'achakach moslim lo rashay prakim, when you have a person who's capable to be a student of really getting deep in, of delving deeply into these teachings, then you give him just the just the the Rashi Prakim, the the keys of the of the topics that you're referring to. Umodimoto Shemitzvenadvan, you give him you're revealing him a little bit of it. And he's smart enough to really grasp the whole picture. And he will know the entire thing and, and the depth of it. So we're talking about very high level students that you can literally bring them the basics and they can go on from there. The Rama goes on to say, "Udvarim edu and these things, amukim heim ad lemaod. They're very extremely deep. Ve'ein kol dad v'dad ruyal esovlan. And not everyone is able, capable of grasping these the depths of these teachings. Valeim amar Shlomo bechokmato b'derek mashal on the corner. And this is what King Solomon said. Kvasim lilvushecha. He brings down in Proverbs, kvasim lilvushecha. Kvasim literally means." Right, the little name of kvasim is, is obviously sheep, which have wool, which you use for your garments. But the rabbis learn out, He goes, things, the rabbis learn, that's a play on words, kvasim can be turned into kvashim, things that are hidden. That things should be, these should be your garments. What do you mean? Right, a garment is a very private thing you put on yourself. These things have to be kept Secret. Teach them within the masses. As it says, they should be to you alone. And not to, the, to strangers. As it says in the Song of Songs, honey and milk under your tongue. Under your tongue, right? So keep it inside, keep it secret. This is how the rabbis explained our. our Elder rabbis, our sages, dvarim sheheim kedvash v'chalav yitach l'shonaich, things that are um, like honey and milk, they should be under your tongue. In other words, these teachings should be very sec- kept secret to only a select, select group. Now, the Rama goes on to say, kol advarim elo, these things, should the ba'onu binyan zen that we spoke about over here, kimal midlihem, they're like a drop in the bucket. They're so deep. He goes. The Rambam says, but they're not like the first and second parak. Here, the Rambam's writing in the, in the fourth chapter of Foundations of Torah, and he's talking about another level. There are two levels. The first two chapters, are the highest level, the most esoteric teachings. The second chapter, he talks about more of creation of, of different levels of the stars and the and how he goes into details of of um, the different parts of matter, etc. It's like more of like a physics kind of teaching and other things that explaining about the, phys- the physical world in addition, the Rambam says. And he says the these the second and third chapter is what we call Maseh Barishit, the actions of creation, right? God created the world, so the world is a physical world. There's a lot of laws of how the world works. So the Rambam was very also into physics. Because the rabbis also said these things shouldn't be studied in too much of the masses. But you take, a, you take one person, you teach him these things, again in a quiet way. The Rambam says, what's the difference of teaching? The work of the chariot, which was the most esoteric teachings, and the teachings of creation here, learning about the physical world. The Rambam says, Shinyan that the work of the chariot, even one individual you don't teach, he has to be very, very special. That he's wise, that you just give him a little, you give him a little bit, and he understands. But when it comes to teaching him about the physics of the world, you can teach an individual, even though he doesn't understand by himself, you can expand and, and expand his horizons. And, and teach him more. You can, you can teach him as much as you want to expand his knowledge. So the Rambam says, why not teach him in public these things? 
And he says, Lafish ain't called Adam, yesh lo dad rechava. Not everyone has the ability, the, um, the ability to grasp the explanation of these things in a clear, in a clear way. And in a clear way, confusing people, there's so many things in this world for us to know. And why get stuck on things that's hard for us to understand. So the Rambam says not everyone is able to grasp Maseh Barishit. Okay? The Rambam goes on to say, When a person contemplates on these things, He understands all the creations of God that God created in the world, from angel level to the different spheres that God created, the Adam, the Chayotzebo, and mankind, and, and all the different other parts of the world. He'll see the wisdom of God and all of God's creations. Mosifa Valamakom. This will add his love to Hashem. And he will love and want to cleave to God. And he'll feel his, his loneliness as a human being. When we start to realize and, and grasp how great the universe that God created, this will bring us to fearing God and realize how great God is beyond our grasp, of course. He tries to compare himself with one of the angels, right? One of these holy things that God created. And, and all the more so, one of these, you know, one of these angelic, we spoke of the ten different angelic levels. That don't have any physical form, it's all a spiritual form. We'll find that he's a, a vessel that's just full of embarrassment and empty. Because he's so, we are nothing compared to the world, this amazing spiritual world that God created. So the Ramah is trying to show us, you know, why the importance of studying these things. And why it's important for us to, be, to contemplate and meditate on the greatness of the world that God created. It brings us to humility. And the Ramah goes on to say in chapter 13 of, um, I'm sorry, in law number 13 of chapter 4 of this Foundations of Torah, V'nyanei arba prakim elu shebachamesh mitzvot elu. The four chapters dealt with five of the commandments we spoke about when I mentioned in the beginning. There are ten laws. The first four chapters deal with five of those laws. That is what our rabbis call the orchard. We spoke about the orchard last time. So this is what the rabbi called about the orchard. And as we mentioned before, four entered the orchard. Although they were great sages of Israel and great wise men, but not all of them had the ability to understand the insights until their utmost, and that's what caused the, the problem. So they requested to enter spiritual levels that were beyond their grasp, and therefore that caused their downfall, as we said. So even great sages weren't able to enter those areas, all of them, except Rabbi Akiva we, we spoke about last week. So therefore, the more so simple individuals like ourselves have to be so careful we try to rise on these high spiritual levels and realize that these things require tremendous purification, a tremendous preparation before we enter these areas. And the Rama goes on to say, And I say, a person is not um, suitable to enter, to go into this orchard. Only a person who has filled his stomach with bread and, and meat. What is he referring to? It's, of course, it's an expression. A person can't jump to high levels of spirituality unless he first has a great background of Lechem and Basal. What is this Lechem and Basal, Rambam says? Who leido be'o ha'asor v'amutaz, to know what is prohibited and what is allowed. Kuyotzei be'em yishar mitzvot, from the commandments. A person doesn't understand the 613 commandments of the Torah before he can go up into prophetic levels. How can he dare have the arrogance to do such a thing without knowing Torah, without knowing what the commandments mean about studying the bread and butter. He goes, even though these things are called small things, our rabbi said, what is considered a big thing? The work of the chariot. What is a small thing? Rav and Abaye were these Amoraim, and they were the rabbis of the Talmud. And those, compared to the Maseh Mekavah, the Rambam says, are considered small things. But nevertheless, the Rambam says, we must first learn the Talmud. Because they 
straighten out a person's understanding before anything. And he said, that is what Hashem has influenced this world to, to make the world a better place to live in. In order to inherit the world to come. And these things are reachable for, for, being for someone great or someone small, whether it's a man, for a woman, someone who has a great knowledge or someone who has less of, a, of, a, of, a, of understanding. The Talmud and, and Jewish law, these things, the Ramam says, are a necessity to begin, and that where it's, that's where it all begins. We must begin in that area. And once we began in that area, we can go on to, to further our knowledge and go for prophetic study, to, to study the workings of the chariot, the workings of creation. That, that requires first a great knowledge of the basics, the Talmud itself. And that's what the Rambam requires, and, and, and stressing the, the necessity and the importance first getting familiar with our Jewish law. And that's extremely important. The Talmud goes on to bring down another source over here. It says, Tanur Rabbanan, we learn in the tractate of the Talmud in Sukkah, Shmonim v'talmidim ayu lo lehilel hazakein. We're going to see why I'm bringing down this particular source now. There were 80 students of Hillel hazakein. I'll explain to you who these rabbis were. Hillel hazakein, in a moment I'm going to talk a little bit about who these rabbis were and give you some background. 30 of them were, were suitable to have the Divine Presence rest upon them like Moshe Rabbeinu, like Moses. And the other 30 were suitable that the, the sun and the moon would stand up just like it did for Joshua. The greatest of all these students of Hillel, were Hillel Azakein, Hillel the Elder was Yonatan ben Uziel. He was called Yonatan ben Uziel. And the smaller one, Katan Shebekulam, the smallest of the students, was Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. He was the smallest of the students. Amu alava Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. But now listen, he says, the greatest was, was Rabbi Yonatan ben Uziel. The, little, the, the smallest was Yo, um, Rabbi Yo, um, Yochanan ben Zakai. And he explains, what, what does it mean to be a small student? Listen to this. How they describe what a small student's all about. They said about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, that he did not put aside one part of the, of the Bible, one Mishnah, Talmud, one bit of the Talmud, one halachot vagadot, any lore, any kinds of our teachings in the Midrash, diktukei Torah v'dikdei sofrim, again, any kinds of, of rabbinical teachings, Torah teachings, Kalim v'chamim, kal v'chomer. Kal v'chomer is a way of, of, of learning out the Torah. And for example, a person could lift 100 pounds, surely he can lift 50 pounds. So a lot of times we use that kind of um, teaching in, related to Torah. Gzerot shavot, gzera shava means to compare um, different par- parts of the, of the Bible. We can make comparisons according to words that are similar. Tkufot, gematriot, understanding the calendar, numbers, sichat malachi asharet, understanding the angelic language, what the angels speak, Sichat Shedim, understanding how the, the Shedim, which are, you can say, the spirits, the way they talk, and the way trees, we're able to understand the language of Tkalim, Mishalot, Kovsim, all kinds of different parables of foxes, Davar Gadol, Davar Katan, large things and small things. What is Davar Gadol? Maseh Merkava. Maseh Merkava refers to the working of the chariots. Davar Katan, the small things, refers to the work of the Talmud, Abai Verava, right? Studying the Talmud. To, to fulfill what it says, to inherit those who I love, Yesh. Yesh literally is, refers to Yesh, means having. What is it? And I will fill their, their um, treasure houses. So Yesh is the same letters meaning as a present. So God fills these, fills, fills the present, fills their, gives them inheritance of all these presents. And the Talmud says, wow, this is Rabbi Yochum and Zakkai, who was an expert in all these areas of study of Torah. Think about how great Gadol Shebukulan, how Yonatan ben Uziel, he was the greatest of them. Wow, what, what, what kind of rabbi was he? All the more so, right? They said about this greatest of all students. When he sits and he studies Torah, 
כל עוב שפורח עליו מיד נשרף. Birds that would fly over his head would, would just be cinder, they would burn up, just because the, the, the energy, the spirituality of that person, any bird that would fly over his head would totally be singed by the, by the energy, the fire of Torah that would come out of the Rabbi Yonatan ben Uziah. So we see here in this Talmudic passage, it's fascinating how, what these great rabbis that we are talking about, what, how much background they had, how much knowledge they had. And these were the ones that were able to walk through the Pardes, walk through the orchard. Only after they were brilliant scholars and spent their entire lifetime studying, investing in Torah. Once they reached these levels, they were capable of being able to enter these special levels of spirituality we spoke about. The, um, well, God willing, we're going to stop here and continue our next lesson in these lines, continuing our, our teachings on prophecy. So I hope you enjoyed the second lesson of our series on prophecy. So bye for now. Take care.